Straight ahead on WBKB, Meyer gears up for COVID-19 vaccinations. Plus, an update on COVID-19 numbers in the wake of a newly discovered variant. And the winners of the annual MLK essay contest have been announced. You're watching Thunder Bay News Network. WBKB News at 6 starts now. This is WBKB News at 6. An in-depth look at news, weather, and sports. From hard-hitting news stories to local events, we're there with coverage you can count on. You're watching WBKB News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Sherry Stewart. And I'm Tyler Cruz. Protests in the Michigan Capitol remain mostly peaceful on Sunday, according to Lansing Mayor Andy Shore. Shore said they were hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. And as of his last update, everything has remained peaceful. Capitol Security had the targeted area on lockdown ahead of chatter and after the events in Washington, D.C., the mayor said. Armed protesters did show up in Lansing, however, the situation remained nonviolent throughout Sunday, despite the presence of counter protests. I'm proud so far of, of everything we've done. We will stay vigilant. Um, we know that, uh, that there's more to the day and there's more to the week coming up. But The mayor's last media update stated there had been no violence thus far. The Capitol security will remain present through the inauguration. A new variant of COVID-19 believed to be more contagious was identified in an adult female from Washtenaw County over the weekend. The first Michigan case of the variant B117 was identified Saturday by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. The health department says the woman recently traveled to the United Kingdom where this variant originated. They also say two new cases of COVID-19 have been identified from close contacts with the woman, but it's not known if they are infected with the variant. And the state of Michigan is reporting 2,843 cases of COVID-19 and 20 deaths. These numbers are from Sunday and Monday. Locally, the health department is reporting 1,152 cases in Alpena County, 288 in Montmorency, and 522 in Presqu'ille County. Also Monday, Alcona County is reporting 321 cases, 1,072 in Iosco, and 286 confirmed cases in Oscoda County. And as always, for the latest on COVID-19 cases, visit michigan.gov slash coronavirus. Well, the state of Michigan partners with Meyer Pharmacies to administer the COVID-19 vaccines. Meyer will receive their first round of 1,950 doses of COVID-19 vaccine this week to distribute in Wayne County. Senior Director of Corporate Communications Frank Guglielmi says they will distribute the vaccines within the first 72 hours of receiving them. He says eventually the vaccines will reach Northeast Michigan. What's going to happen next is as the vaccine supply continues to flow, Meyer, as a company with 120 pharmacies in the state of Michigan, will be vac vaccinating more and more people as we get more and more vaccines. Guglielmi says getting registered is the most important thing right now. He says the state of Michigan has asked them to focus on the age group of 65 and over. Guglielmi added as more vaccines come to the state, the phases of vaccination will change. And for folks who register online, um, they'll be, once they do register, and once the vaccines start flowing, we'll start notifying people. They'll be contacted saying, you have an opportunity to have a vaccine on this date. To register for the COVID-19 vaccine at Meyer, you can text COVID to 75049 or visit clinic.meyer.com. You can also go to the Meyer store and ask to be registered at the pharmacy. Nature-loving landowners in Northeast Michigan have an opportunity to work with the Department of Natural Resources. The state DNR has opened applications for Deer Private Land Assistance Network, or PLAN grants. Applicants to this competitive grant program propose a plan to improve deer habitat quality on their land. The grants range from five to $15,000. Ashley Autenreath, deer program biologist for the DNR, says the use of land in applications matters more than the raw acreage. It's more about what you can do with what you have. Um, so, you know, if you have the ability, say, on one acre to put in a good food plot and some trees and you, you know, maybe want to bow hunt there, um, 
that qualifies. Out and Reed says applicants who propose plans that aid in bovine tuberculosis control, such as antler collection, will receive extra points on their application. The applications are open to Alpena, Alcona, Crawford, Montmorency, Oscoda, and Presque Isle counties. The application period closes February 28th. Well, in the spirit of celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the MLK Committee of Alpena has selected the winners of its annual essay contest. The yearly signature event offers Alpena's junior and senior high school students an opportunity to show off their writing skills while celebrating the life and legacy of civil rights icon Martin Luther King Jr. This year's winners are 16-year-old Madison Szymanski, a junior at Alpena High School, and 11-year-old Aiden Gagnon, a sixth grader at Thunder Bay Junior High. And here's a snippet of the thoughtful essays the students submitted answering the question, what can you do to help create a beloved community? Martin Luther King Jr. believed that a beloved community was one in which love triumphed over hate. When the majority of people think about Martin Luther King Jr., they instantly remember his I Have a Dream speech and may feel a bit overwhelmed. Like if we can't do something that massive, then why are we even doing anything? Are we even truly having an impact on the world? But the truth is, we all have the power to change the world and create a beloved community among all people. It only takes one small action to make others feel loved. It only takes one person in one action to create a ripple effect that will transcend time. After all, the speech Dr. King gave wasn't written in a day. Change takes time, but if we start now, it won't be long. On August 28, 1963, a great man told the world about his ideas. One of them was that poverty, hunger, and homelessness would not be tolerated. And the person who said that was none other than the late, great Martin Luther King Jr., a true hero for the early stages of peacemaking that vastly spread around the globe. And congratulations again to this year's winners. Well, there's more ahead for you here on WBKB coming up, a look at Bay Athletic Club's annual celebration. 62nd inspiration story of the year to 23-year-old Mikhail Carter. Mikhail is a young woman who lost her father to cancer and had her life turned upside down during the pandemic. After college, Carter landed her dream job teaching English in Germany, but was forced to come home on short notice because of the pandemic. That's when she turned to Thunder Bay Athletic Club, lost 85 pounds, and found a positive foundation to keep building a life on. Mikhail won $100 cash and a $100 donation to an organization of her choice. A wonderful story. Yes. yes, and congratulations. Well, in Health Watch, troubling data about one of the city's hardest hit by COVID-19 and how students in the UK may have, impact, may have been impacted by the pandemic. Naomi Ruckham has a look at some of the day's top health stories. A new study in the journal Health Systems finds British college students who went home for the holidays may have led to more than 9,000 new infections of COVID-19 across the UK. On average, researchers estimate an infected student passed the illness on to just one other household member. Having a poor diet rather than less physical activity may explain the childhood obesity crisis. That's according to researchers at Baylor University who found South American children who consumed higher calorie processed foods averaged 65% more body fat than their rural counterparts who ate more naturally. And a report published in the journal Heart Rhythm examines hospitals hit hard by the coronavirus in New York City. In neighborhoods overwhelmed with COVID-19 cases, researchers found sudden deaths outside the hospital from conditions like cardiac arrest also increased. Experts say it's unclear if those deaths were related to the virus or limited access to care during the surge. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Well, coming up on WBKB News, Ellie Morrison is next with your seven-day forecast plus the photo of the day. Stay tuned. Chance of a few flurries on Monday with highs in the upper 20s. Today's photo was sent in by Megan Barkley. She calls this a little piece of heaven on earth taken on Baining Road. Certainly nice to see some heavenly rays shining down on our area. Thank you, Megan, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo such as nature shots, pics with friends or interesting sites you see that you'd like to send us, email it along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. 
It would be nice nice. if those clouds went away and let the whole sun in for once. Yeah, that's a nice (laughs) shot. (laughs) Sports is coming up first, but Jake Vandenbroek is in with not only a preview, but a new haircut as well. Jake, what's going on? Hey, Tyler, I did get a new haircut. And by the way, next in sports, now that all of our 11-man football teams are done playing, we'll announce our top plays of the 2020 season for those. Plus, the Red Wings took the ice this afternoon in the Battle of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Highlights on this game up next in sports. And welcome back. As part of a new series, Unifying America, recognizing people who are trying to right injustices and bring communities together, Deborah Alfaron introduces us to a talented group of artists in the nation's capital. They're gathered on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day, just blocks away from part of a city under a security lockdown, working to spread the slain civil rights leader's message of freedom, equality, justice, and love. Check it out. Artist Levi Robinson has a sense of what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would say about this moment in time if the civil rights leader were alive today. He would appeal to us to submit to our higher selves. Robinson's hoping that message comes to life through these spray painted strokes on this boarded up block in the nation's capital. He's looking towards the future and towards progress. Quite literally, the next panel over is Progress by artist Des Zambrano who was inspired by his favorite MLK quote. We must live together as brothers or perish together as fools. In the days following the attack on the Capitol, Zambrano knows many may be doubting progress and wondering if the country is backsliding. Progress hurts. Progress is difficult, but uh, no good progress comes without a little bit of pain. The embodiment of progress, according to artist Sean Perkins, is Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, featured in the third panel. For me, this is just like I'm in heaven right now. These artists are part of a nonprofit called Paints Institute. They're responsible for dozens of murals throughout D.C. It's good for them to actually be out and give service and show their talent off, which is for a bigger purpose, especially now with what's going on. Their aim is to revitalize this neighborhood and the country with messages of hope. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Washington. And as always, you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports, weather, and news updates anytime, day or night. Or be sure to check us out on our Facebook page and Twitter handle at WBKB.